Facebook ads are powerful when it comes to bringing awareness to your products and services, and Facebook by far is the most targeted social media platform out there when it comes to getting in front of your exact audience. Needless to say, if you are not using Facebook ads to promote what you have to offer, you are leaving money on the table. In this video, I'm gonna share effective strategies that you can use to totally crush it on the platform, and then I'm gonna go through a conversion ad walk through so you can go ahead and set one up for yourself. If you are arriving to my channel for the first time, my name is Christian. I talk about everything entrepreneurship, online business, and social media marketing. If you find this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. The first tip that I have for you is to include one interest per ad set. When you are running your campaigns in Facebook, there is a way to target people by interest. So for example, if you are targeting people for a beauty product, you might include interests like Huda Beauty or Kylie Cosmetics as some of your interests. The best thing to do instead of including a bunch of interests in one ad set is to separate them one by one and have them running in their own ad campaign. The reason for this is because if you're compiling five to ten different interests in one ad set and you let this ad run, it's going to be nearly impossible to figure out what's working and what's not because essentially you want to do more of what's working so that you can scale and get more signups, get more sales, but if you don't know which interest is working, then it's going to make it really difficult for you to scale. So. With you running each interest individually, you can see which ones are working properly and effectively, and then you can decide which ones that you want to put more or allocate more dollars towards so that you can scale your business. Tip number two that I have for you is to not include too much text on your actual image that you're using in the Facebook ad. You want to make sure that you are including the text inside of the actual headline or the primary text, but on the actual picture that you're using, have little to no text on it because Facebook will one, display a weird message saying that there's too much text on your image, and then what will happen is sometimes it shows your ad to less people. So to avoid this problem, try not to include too much text on your Facebook ad images. The next tip that I have for you, and tip number three, is to spy on your competitors' ads. If you find that you are trying to figure out what ad copy you should use, what type of images, look up similar competitors in your industry, go to their Facebook pages. On the page transparency section on your competitors page, this is the way to see what ads they have running. So what better way to do research, right? You can go there and see how long these ads have been running, the copy that they're using, the types of images, and I am not saying for you to go to your competitors pages and just steal their ads and then run it for yourself. This is not what I'm recommending. I'm saying that you want to use this as a guide and for inspiration so that you can think of a way to make an ad better for yourself. What can you do better than them? What kind of words can you include? What kind of images? You know, you can make something similar, but make it your own, make it better. Do not just go out there and copy people's work. This is a great way to start creating some great campaigns that perform well because your competitors are already doing the research for you. And this page transparency section will also tell you how long an ad has been running. So if they have an ad there that's been running for a couple of months, that's a good indicator that that ad is performing well for them because if it wasn't performing well for them, they would have turned it off months ago. So those are the kind of ads that you want to pay attention to and see how you can recreate for yourself. Tip number four is to remarket to your audience from day one. Remarketing is a great way to get your message in front of an audience that has already shown interest in what it is that you have to offer. And remarketing ads are oftentimes a lot more cost effective than running cold conversion ads to an audience. A great way to remarket to your audience is to present some type of discount or special offer in order to get them back over to your website and to complete whatever action that it is that you're trying to get them to take. In order to get started with remarketing, also known as retargeting ads, you want to make sure that you have a pixel installed on your website and also set up through Facebook. If this is not something that you feel comfortable with doing, I'm not gonna go over the whole pixel thing in this video, but if it's something that you need assistance with, there are people on Fiverr and Upwork all day that can help you with setting up something like this and it's not too expensive to have someone take care of this for you. I won't go into too much detail about retargeting and pixels now because it is a lot of information and that is just a separate video in itself, but if you do need some help with this, I can create a video but also there are freelancers out there that can set this up and plenty of tutorials out there as well for you if you want to do it yourself. 
All right, welcome to the conversion ad walkthrough. I'm gonna show you how to set up your conversion ad. The first thing that you need to get started is to access Facebook Ads Manager and you access this by going to the drop down in your profile page and then clicking Manage Ads. Once you are in Facebook Ads Manager, you hit Create. We are looking to do a conversion ads because we want people to sign up for our offer. So we want conversions. There's some other options here like traffic. For example, if we pick the traffic option, Facebook will send as many people as possible to your destination. But we want conversions because we want people to follow through with an action, whether it's to sign up for something, book a call, purchase a product. That would be a conversion. So I'm clicking that and then I'm going to scroll down. We're going to name our campaign. So we'll do test campaign. You can name this whatever you like. We'll leave create AB test off. Budget optimization, you can leave that on. Essentially, Facebook will keep an eye on which campaigns are doing the best and allocate more budget towards the campaigns that are doing the best. I'll just leave that alone. For a daily budget, it automatically defaults to $100 um, a day, which is extremely high. I'm going to do $5 a day, which is a good place to start when you are testing and then you can scale up and increase your daily spend. Now I'm going to hit continue. For our ad set name, because now we are in the ad set, we're going to do test ad set and you can name this whatever you want. And for the destination where we're sending and directing our traffic is going to be to a website and nine times out of 10, that's where you're going to be sending people. It usually defaults to this so you can leave that on website. Now for the conversion event, I took out my uh, pixel that was there. You'll have to have a pixel installed on your website and set up through Facebook. There are tutorials out there that can show you how to easily do this. But if you don't feel comfortable, you can hire someone through Fiverr or Upwork to set up a pixel and pixels essentially track. Uh, Facebook will track your visitors actions on your site with a pixel. So Facebook tracks all this for you. And then essentially once that pixel is set up, you choose it through here. So I'm going to just pick one. All right, initiate checkout. I'll put that there. For dynamic creative, we're going to leave this the way it is. And for offer, we'll leave this the way that it is. And we're going to be creating a new audience. If you have, say, a large list of emails or customers emails you can upload it for a custom audience and and do some stuff like that but we're going to be targeting a cold audience so we're going to leave the custom audience section alone and then we're going to go down to where it says locations and age if you hit edit you can type in the various different countries so if you want to target the United Kingdom, Canada, wherever, you just type it in down there and make sure it says include. If you want to exclude any particular countries, you can drop down to where it says exclude and then you click it and then type in the country that you want to exclude. But I'll leave the US and the United Kingdom here. And then I'm going to scroll down for age. We're going to edit this. We don't want to target people 18 to 65. I know for me, my target demographic is usually people ages 24 to I'll do 37. And you can leave gender all or if you want to target all females. You can do women and you can see on the audience size here, it's narrowing down as I put in more information. Now for detailed targeting, 
you want to put in people who are interested in things that pertain to what it is that your business is about, right? And as I mentioned, you want to include one interest per ad set. So we're in the ad set, we're gonna include one interest. So if we are sticking with the, let's say the beauty niche, right? And you want to sell some makeup products, let's look up All right, so we put in Kylie Cosmetics, and over here it still says about 50 million potential reach. And we can leave this box checked, reach people beyond your detail targeting when it's likely to improve performance. We'll leave that. Now for languages, I'm going to do English all because I want to make sure that the people that my ads are getting in front of actually can read and understand what it is my ad says. So I'm gonna do English all. I'll click show more options. We'll leave that as all people. Now there's automatic placements and then there's manual placements. Manual placements is when you have specific places that you want Facebook to show your ads. Automatic, I don't always use automatic placements because it tends to burn through the budget relatively relatively quickly. And this is when you're kind of relying on Facebook to just choose where your ad goes. I'm going to hit edit placements. And as you can see, these are the different choices. So you can uncheck if you don't want your ad going to Facebook or Messenger or Audience Network. I'm going to uncheck Messenger. I'm going to uncheck Instagram. Go on to uncheck Stories. Now I'm unchecking Instagram because I like to sometimes create separate ads just for Instagram, but you can leave that checked if you want. So now I'm going to leave Facebook and Audience Network checked off. And we have everything up here we need. And then for the schedule, we'll leave it run my ad continuously starting today. But if you have a specific set start and end date, you can check this here and then pick the days that you want your ads to start and end. But I'm going to leave it as run my ad continuously starting today. And then I'm gonna hit continue. All right, and then this will bring you to the ad level where you're actually creating your ad. So again, to stay organized and make sure you're not confusing yourself, it's good to name your campaign ad set and ad. So this is the ad. I'm going to do test ad. And then you need to select your Facebook page that you want showing up with your ad and then if you have an Instagram account if you are selecting the Instagram option to distribute your ad you can click your Instagram account and then you choose the format of your ad so you can do a carousel ad if you have multiple images a single image or video so if it's just one image and one video you can select that those are the main two and then this collection, but the two that I play around with the most are carousel and single image or video if you have an image or video that you want to use. I'm not going to go through images and all of that. That's something entirely different, but I just wanted to show you how to get up until this point. You add your media here. You add your primary text here. So your call to action and your ad copy will go there. And then you want to make sure that you are including a website URL for where people are going to land. Where are you driving the traffic to? This is where you're going to put the URL. And for the calls to actions, there's learn more, shop now, sign up, subscribe, request time. Those are the different options that you have to choose from. So once you've uploaded your images that you want to display on the ad, and as I mentioned, with the images, make sure that you don't have too much text on the actual picture, otherwise Facebook will give you a hard time. And yeah, then you should be ready to rock and roll. Start with a small $5 a day budget 
and then increase your spend once you start to see which ad sets are working. And you can go from there to start scaling. I hope that you found this helpful. All right, lovely people, that is all that I have for you today. If you have any questions, make sure you comment below, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up. I will see you in my next video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel.